Let's get over to our man, Mr. Tim Ord, as we do each and every Thursday at 20 past the hour. You can reach Tim every trading day at ord-oracle.com. And as you come over to our website at TFNN, folks, you're going to see right on the front page under featured content, our man, Mr. Tim Ord. You get that uh, great looking guy right there. And you have the S&P 500, June 8th. That's going to be next Thursday. We have gold, June 15th. Tim is going to be doing two workshops for us. Bottom line is that he's going to be going through the different indicators that he uses in order to trade this market each and every day. The first workshop, folks, uh, bottom line, next week, it's $295. Or you can go to, to both of them for $495. You can take your pick. So go over to our website at TFNN. Real easy. Just sign up right there, and you are off to the races. Tim Ord, what's going on? Great. Talking about that picture, that picture is probably 25 years old. I love so that picture. I, I know. Exactly <laughs> like that. <laughs> so. That's a beautiful but, thing, man. <laughs> yeah, a beautiful thing. So we'll keep it. But anyhow, I think you some charts. Yep. Um, so anyhow, it just is kind of. I just wanted to show where we are on the S and P's, and we'll, we'll start with chart one. Uh, I can go back a lot more in time, but the whole thing kind of remains the same. So I went yep. back to, I don't know, several years. And, like and five, on the, on the first there. chart, is that with the McClellan Oscillator? Yeah, the McClellan okay, Oscillator, cool. which okay. is the uh, top window. Yep. And shows past, um, you know, the, the bottom of 19. Well, anyhow, in a nutshell, the, the whole thing is panic again, and there's different indicators you can use to find where panic is yes and you really want to you know basically be along when everybody's heading through the exit door you want to be the guy on the other side going in right so and if you got a lot of different indicators kind of get you pretty close to that level to find out where um you know the, the, the opportune time to really go into the in, entrance i guess so and Tim, we'll, we'll, there's a pretty good indicator for that it's not perfect but it's it's pretty good, but right. when you so, ever get up, I'm sorry, go ahead. That's right. So when we're looking at that chart, right, would you right. say that the panic came at the beginning of March? Is that what we're talking here? Uh, for which bottom? The, well, the that's bottom? what I'm trying to figure out. That's what, that's what, that's what I'm asking, right? Is, was it at the last, the bottom of the consolidation that we just broke out of, or was it at the oh, bottom okay. of March, or right. was it the I, bottom? Yeah, I know what you're saying. Actually, we'll lead right up to it. Look, go back to uh, to, to that bottom in 2019. Okay. And my my point is, well, uh, McCollin Oscar uh, was it below minus 300. And that's kind of like a a climax. Then you need a rally to show a sign of strength, just like we said last time. You got to have a selling climax. Then right after it, you got to have a sign of strength. Well, a sign of strength. As far as the McCollin oscillator, this is NYSE McCollin oscillator. Yes. Has to go from minus 300 to plus 300. Okay. Usually within 30 days. Okay. And that's what that's what happened in 2019. Wow. And again, that happened in March of 2020. I get the, it. The, the COVID crash, I guess yep. you might say. Yep. Then, then what we had here in the current time frame, we had a McCollin oscillator hit below, actually hit uh, four, minus 420 in October of last year. Then went to a sign of strength above plus three three hundred, and again it went back. Uh, looks like about March or April, uh, probably March of this year. It hit below uh, three hundred again, and in er early April it went back above three uh, hundred. My point of this: we had two buying and selling climaxes uh, in that buying process in the current buying process, which basically started last October. Yes. So, now, so that that's pretty rare. I went back. You can go back as far as you want. You really, I can't remember finding two, but this time we got two selling climaxes, two buying climaxes. So this market's pretty persistent. You know, I tried to go down again, went through a selling climax. So we got two. To me, this has more power. It's kind of hard to understand. It's no, no, no. Hey, listen, we get it. This is awesome. This is what we're going to go through. Because what's so right. cool here, folks, watch this. I'm going to put this. That's why I was asking Tim this question. Because when you put this up, that's how much fear there actually was only on yep. the March pullback, which only got to 3808. So that's pretty cool in the context of what you're talking about, Tim. You see that? You know what I mean? It's like, okay, you know, you'd, you'd think that when you're talking about, you know, panic, 
that would have to go a lot lower than that. But the fact of the matter is there was panic in the marketplace. And we didn't get down that much. But, of course, that it, where it matters is that how fast people are selling, correct? Right. That, yeah. There you go. You, you're exactly right. So yeah. we didn't even reach down to the October lows. We went down for right. the eyeball in here. It looks like a couple, three weeks. You know, and panic exploded yep. to the downside. That's so, so cool, you know, man. This market is, what I'm saying is, this implies this market really resilient. Right. And uh, so it's, it's got some power to it. You know, it's, you know, previous times when you got down it, just one time a selling climax to a buying, uh, uh, a selling climax to a buying climax, you know, that was the bottom you went straight up. Right. And here we got two. So I'm thinking, you know, this this is this market has more power to it. There's another thing too. Uh, uh, everybody's talking now about the market is and whatever. You know, basically the market doesn't really. Uh, the market, the more money you put into the, uh, the economy, which is what uh, the current president is kind of doing, the, a lot of that money is going to find its way into the market. Yes, as long as that money supply is is expanding or accelerating. You're not going to have a bull. You're not going to have a bear market when they start taking money out of the economy. Is uh, when the market really starts to peak out and go down. So as long as money supply is kind, of, is kind of expanding here, no matter how bad the news is about the economy, there's too much money in the economy. I think uh, for the market to go down. Right. Even so, though what, what is happening is that there is money coming out, but there's more money going in too. I, I'm with you. Right. I get it. I get yeah, it. Trust but, me. I know. So I'm I'm saying that's how bear markets going to go. So our next uh, president, if it's Biden again, where the market may continue, the next president could be, we don't know, but uh, if they restrict the money supply, I think that'll be the time you start getting a pullback. And the indicators will, will show it, too. Right. So, right. Uh, but anyhow, this is this looks really good, in my opinion. The market tries to go down, it can't reach its panic, yep. and the smart money comes in and rebuys it. So the smart money bought over the last uh, approximately six months or so, they bought twice. Yes. And so the hey. public, is, in my opinion, is kind of out of the market. They're afraid of it. And the smart money is buying it. Yes. Now, listen, I got this is this is kind of intriguing, Tim, in the context of what happened yesterday, right? So yesterday, you know, I'm in the weeds here on this, but the bottom line is that all the indices, you know, like they went down and the volume exploded. Yep, yep. You know, so it's like, how do you look at that? Well, actually, you got to watch. Uh, let me. Yeah, the really volume to take out it didn't quite meet the parameters, but every time you get a thirty percent increase, in, uh, say the market's going along at one hundred million shares a day, approximately eighty to one hundred and ten yes. or something. Yeah, and all of a sudden the market explodes and has one hundred thirty million shares. That doesn't matter; it's up or down. But if the volume expands like thirty percent or more compared to the days around it. A lot of times, that's an exhaustion move, whether it's up or down. The market will at least stop uh, because, because all that energy is wasted. You know, you have a 30% increase in jump in energy, that's going to stop the market. And that's what happened yesterday. It didn't really expand 30%. No, it was just the close, I know. 30% from the previous day. Stay right there, Tim. We're coming right back. Stay right there, folks. Come right back. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow Industrials right now up 183. Nasdaq's up 171. S&P's are up 39. We're talking with our man, Mr. Tim Ward. And Tim's going to be doing a workshop for us, folks, next Thursday, 4 to 6 o'clock. You can sign up for that right on the front page of TFNN. You're going to see it right under Featured Content. Okay, Tim, so do you want me to go to the next chart now? Yeah, I would, uh, this is um, kind of a... You know, we, we keep talking about panning. There's a lot of different types. Yeah, uh, go to chart number two. Okay. And I just want to show, you know, there's a VIX, V-I-X, the volatility index. Yep. And there's a V-V-I-X, which is VIX of the VIX. Yes. And you, you can actually substitute uh, the V-V-I-X for the VIX. But anyhow, it seems to work for whatever reason. The V-V-I-X seems to work better to find short-term lows. Okay. And anyhow, when the when the VIX goes up, that's kind of like everybody's on the put side. That's yes. how the VIX gets. The VIX is kind of an offshore-related indicator. So, and puts are, when the acceleration in put value, that means people are paying up for puts, and it means that they're scared of the market. Actually, I don't want to get a, a bunch of details into it, but a VIX is a good fear indicator. 
Let's right. put it that way. And the VIX, is, right. the VIX is also as good as the VIX, uh, as the VIX. Yes. What I got here, uh, the second window down from the top, is yep. the VVIX. And um, the bottom, uh, okay, uh, okay, the second window up from the bottom is the rate of change, is the two-period rate of change of the VIX. Okay, cool. Or of the VVIX. Right. So it measures the acceleration of the VIX. Yes. So the faster the VIX goes up, that means there's kind of there's panic in the market. Yes. That's what the VIX, that's what the VIX does. So, so it's another form of panic. It's kind of like the trend. Uh, well, it's not even like the trend, but it's another I'm fear indicator. Yeah. yeah. It's another panic indicator. Right. So, so, so anyhow, so... What I did on, on this, I combined the acceleration of the VVIX and compared that to the the 10-day trend. Okay. Which is when, when anything above 1.2 on the 10-day trend is showing panic. Yes. So anyhow, I went back over the last, I don't know, it looks like about a year here. And uh, also, the, the top window is the RSI for the VIX. It's okay. kind of another acceleration thing for the VIX. Yep. So what you're trying to do is measure how fast the VIX goes up, and the faster the VIX goes up is a higher degree of fear. Nice. So it's, a, it's another panic indicator. And when you look so at this chart, folks, okay, that what Tim has, when it says ROC, that's rate of change. That's what he's saying. This is pretty cool, Tim. Yeah, I got it. Okay, cool. Yep. Yeah. And so the RSI. So anyhow, so I just went back and took the, uh, the rate of the two-period rate of change of the VIX yes. and compared that to the 10-day trend, just get more confirmation of a bottom because when you're step, you know, when you're kind of stepping in, in front of a, a car at midnight, you know, you want to have some assurance that you're not going to get run over by the market. You That's know what right. I mean? So you, you try to find good indicators that tell you where that car is going to stop before you get run over. Yes. And, uh, and so it's, that's what this, this, these charts are designed to do. But anyhow, if you look back in uh, of June of last year, you got the the bottom window is the ten day trend, and it's way above. Uh, looks like about the high of around one point four or five. Yeah. And the rate of change of the VIX was at extreme level. Um, I can looks see like that. About Twenty five. And the uh, the, uh, the top window is RSI for the, the VIX. BBIX didn't quite get to where you needed to go, but it did help you um, right. pick out the bottom. So, so that's what this, these two indicators kind of do. You want to see fear in the trend, and you want to see the BBIX rising rapidly. And so that's how you picked that shaded blue areas is where those uh, I see it signals yeah signals to, uh, came in at. All right. So that's how you get kind of confidence that. Uh, if you're kind of a short-term trader, you, you don't do some moving averages way behind the time frame. You're picking right. where and that's all the if panic's you, if we were watching at, television, and that's when you step in. Right. If we were watching television at that point, everyone would be saying, oh, we're going to hell in a handbag, right? That's what normally happens. Right. Yeah, that's exactly what you want to hear. Right. Hell in a handbasket. Right. You go look at your indicators and see where they are and see and make sure they're in the hell in the handbasket. If they are, you step in. Right. So right. Cool. Um, so, so, anyhow, that's... That's the reason why my, my seminars or webinars are all going to be you know kind of panic. There's a lot of type of different panic indicators. I use yes. the VVIX, uh, the trend, the ticks. And, and getting to picks. understand these folks is so cool because when, when you combine them, you know, I can tell you that, you know, the, 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 as I told you last week, the first workshop that Tim did for us, you know, and I'm going back to 94, 1994, that is, folks. Wow. <laughs> um, you know, You're getting pretty old, Tom. I, hey, <laughs> man, we, we, I start counting backwards at 60, Tim. I'm, I'm not, right, right now, I'm only 52. <laughs> All right. There you go. <laughs> well, I wish. So, anyway. But, this is but yeah, cool. That, that was 94. Yeah. It was 94. Way back then, huh? Isn't that crazy? I know. God, that's, that's 30 years ago. It is. It oh, is. Almost 30. Uh, it's crazy, man. That was a fun time. That was. Yeah. The Actually, the first time I met you, I remember you uh, you picked me up at the airport. Yeah. And um, uh, you had a Mercedes, yeah. which I thought was pretty cool. Yeah. And you, you had a T-shirt on yeah. that had a, 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 a graphic of a suit, or a, maybe it was a tuxedo or something. Did I? <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> Instead of wearing a sports jacket or something, you had a T-shirt that had a suit on oh it. Oh, my gosh. That, that, was, that, was, that, that was pretty cool. Unreal. So, yeah. Yeah. That is but, so funny, man. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. So, but anyhow. This is so um, cool. So, want to go to the next shot? Yeah, we can go to the next chart. Um, okay, well, this is the Bollinger is, Band one. This is a good one, man, too. Uh, we've always been, you've always been dealing with this. Do you remember when I, you know, I used to have B Bollinger on a lot. Um, you know, when the, oh. the market was running. Because I remember he was always talking about the aspect of, you know, and you can see it kind of in this chart, <laughs> like at the beginning when the, the, the market loves to run up Bollinger Bands. And I remember asking him, Tim, saying, well, look, how long can this go? He says, well, man, he says, I've seen them climb on these bars and just keep going. And that's exactly what Yahoo did until it blew up. I mean, that, that's, that's was almost the question that I remember asking him. But this, of course, was in the 90s before the whole market blew up. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, he's uh, he's still out there, isn't he? Uh, yes, yes. I, I gave up years ago. I gave a. I remember he, uh, it was what was it? I forgot his first Bob Bollinger. Bob. Um. um John Bollinger. John Bollinger. Yeah. You're right. John Bollinger. Um, it was Tom McCollin. Yep. Um. I don't know, but a few John other Murphy. guys. About ten of us. We gave a. Uh, a, a so I got to meet all those guys. It was in Las Vegas. I forgot. Oh, it was fine. back in the nineties and. Yeah, and everybody was kind of new to that. Not new, but yeah, you know, Colin right. Osplayer had been around for years because the dad kind of right was really into it, and Tom was uh, getting into it. But you know, that, besides the point, let's get back to this uh, uh, indicator here. This is a kind of I think I showed this last week, if not the week before. But it, this is charts updated to uh, current time frame, and this is a weekly chart, and uh, the. the uh, there's, all right, you want me to come back or? No, yeah, yeah, you stay right there, stay right there. This is Tim Moore, right. Tom O'Brien, folks. Check out uh, the front page of TFNN uh, next Thursday, folks. It's going to be an amazing workshop, two hours. You're going to have an hour and a half of getting to understand what Tim is speaking about on these. And then you get a half hour flat out. You're going to be talking back and forth because that's what you need, folks, to really get these understood. Stay right there. Tim and I come right back. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow's up 116. Nasdaq's up 135. S&Ps are up 30. We're talking with our man, Mr. Tim Ord. And right now, we have the chart we have up and we are going over is the uh, Bollinger Band pinch. There we go, Tim. Uh, all right. The bottom, uh, this is uh, the weekly SPX, right? Yes. Okay. The bottom window is the five-week average of the SPX to VIX ratio. Okay. And... We showed, I think they showed this a couple of weeks ago. Can't remember, but I think but it's kind of a repeat. I just wanted to show where we are and what's happening. Nice. But yep. when, the S, when the weekly S, SPX makes higher highs and the five-week average of the SPX VIX ratio makes lower highs, you're heading into a top. How cool and you is go that? you as you want with this. But the VIX is saying the VIX is starting to go up as the SPs goes up. So when you both are going up, so what happens? The market's going up, and the VIX going up, showing uh, that fear is starting to enter into the market. Or yes, um, now, now folks, smart. Yeah, that that right, right there is worth the the dollars for the workshop. Because listen to what Tim's saying. That is so cool, Tim. It's amazing. Okay, I get it. Yeah, yeah. yeah so so I I, I, I think. I wake up in the middle of the night thinking of these stupid things, and I, I go back and, and try to create charts to prove that point or disprove it. Yes. And I, I came up that a couple of years ago, and I went back and tested it. didn't really work that well on a daily, but it seemed to work really well on a weekly. Okay. But anyhow, it did work back at the, um, well, actually, the, uh, yeah, the March of, uh, of 2000 decline, which uh, nobody, that, well, anyhow, yeah, the, that was a COVID decline. Right. So nobody really, I, I was back there, and I really didn't see a top of any consequence because I didn't have this indicator at the time. But that picked out the COVID decline. Yeah. If you can see there, the SPs were making higher highs, and that ratio was going right down. And it picked another top in, uh, you know, the January of 2022, you know, you made a divergence there. That so it's pretty cool because thing. now you have you, you had indicators for the lows, you had indicators for the highs, and now talk to me about this Bollinger being pinch above it. 
All right. You're talking about the Bollinger Band pinch on the uh, weekly SPX, right? Yes, yes. Right. So we're starting to pinch together. Okay. So even though the, if you look how narrow the market's been over the last uh, month, you know, month and a half, whatever, or actually since beginning of April, so about two months, uh, and the pinch is starting to really come together, so we're probably going to see acceleration the pinch doesn't tell you what direction it's going to be. It just tells you the acceleration of low volatility, you're going to head to high volatility. Okay, cool. And so and if you look down at the five-week uh, SPX fixed ratio, yes, the S&P has been moving sideways basically since January of this year. Right. It just it hadn't gone any really, or February, depends how you look at it. it. hadn't really gone anywhere. It went down, came back, and we're kind of just hugging uh, the January highs for right now. But the SPX fixed ratio is making higher highs. Right. So that's that's bullish. That's bullish. So, no, I, I get, I yeah. get it. Yeah, for so sure. Not, you're going to break up, not down. Right. No, I'm with you. Because so, if it's the other way around, if the VIX or the SP was going sideways, and the SPX fixed ratio is making lower highs, I mean down. Yes. But this is the opposite. So we're going sideways, going up. So at some point, probably. <laughs> I don't know exactly what day or anything, you know, it could be June, uh, July, but we're probably going to uh, see some sort of a, a, a decent surge. You know, whatever news is going to be, don't know yet. Right. There's a surge coming. And, and then if surge, we go to the next shot, which is the daily percent index uh, and the bullish percent index and the, um, oh, the gold miners. Uh, okay. All right. We'll do that real quick. The whole point of this thing is... No, we still we still get four minutes, percent, Tim. We get still four and a half minutes, so... We got four, okay. Yeah. We got four... Well, anyhow, the bullish percent index of the gold miners index, what it does is it measures percent of stocks that are point-and-figure buy signals in the gold miners index. Oh, the point-and-figure. So I That's right, man. Okay, cool. Okay. Yeah, it's, it measures all the, the point-and-figure buy signals. So, you know, the, the top window there... Um, is a bullish percent index for the gold miners index. Every time it got to 95 percent, in other words, 95 percent of the stocks in the gold miners index were on point and figure bicycle. Every time that happened at, at 95 percent or higher, the market was at the top. Yep. Every time the market was down below 8 percent or less, in other words, only 8 percent of the stocks in the gold miners index were on bicycles, and virtually nothing was on a bicycle. Only 8 percent of the stocks were at the bottom. And so when everybody gets really bullish, uh, anyhow, right now we, we did have that uh, bullish percent index got down to 5% here uh, back in uh, late 2022, probably November or December. Okay. And that was, that was bullish. Uh, and so that pretty much matched where the bottom was in the uh, uh, GDX here. Right? That blue line goes right. down. Right. So... They, uh, that's my point. It picked out all the major bottoms, all except for one back in 2018. I had a red line there. That one right. failed. And, and but all the other ones, we were at a bottom. And, folks, well, this is what's so cool about this. If you've never done point and figure, I used to have Tom Dorsey on all the, all the time, and he was like the big point and figure guy. It's a lagging indicator, the up or down. So it's so cool what Tim is doing here is that you have, he, he's using that point and figure and you're getting the extreme, so it's pretty wild because when you look at it, like yeah, you get a 95, and on that scale, when they'd be saying, "Oh, bye, bye, bye," when in fact, oh, that's the sell, 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 and just the opposite, which is so cool. Right, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah you're I know. kind of doing what the opposite everybody else is doing. No, for sure. So. No, no, I get it, man. A point and figure has always been good, folks. Okay, but it lags in a big way. So what Tim has with this ratio is huge because of the fact. I mean, I, I, I. I I know point and figure pretty well. So I, when I had Dorsey on, I think he had he had his own program. Dorsey had his own program. Okay, so let's go to the last one. All right, the last. Let's see. I get the monthly GDX and the Bollinger Bands All together. All right. Here's a. Uh... So we got a bicycle on that because uh, everybody dumped all their gold stocks back in, say, November of last year. And this is the uh, cumulative advanced decline on the monthly, cumulative advanced decline percent for GDX on the monthly time frames. Yep. And it's a great oscillator to keep in bull and bear markets. And so it, it doesn't give very many signals, but the signals it does give is pretty 
that's pretty awesome. Yes. But the, bo- the bottom window is the uh, up-down volume advanced client indicators, and it goes back as far as I could go back. But what it did is pretty much match what happened in the 2016 lows. It okay. got down there in 2019, and yep. again here we're just airing it again. It did cross back up above the mid-Bollinger Band, which is what my buy signal was created, but it turned back down again. Okay. But it's pretty much matching the lows, so I'm thinking we're pretty extremes to the downside here. Okay. And so the up-down volume did give a buy signal, but turned back down, but it's gone sideways since mid-last year. It really hadn't made any lower lows. It just moved sideways. And it's pretty much matched in the lows of 2016 and 2019. The next chart above it is a, uh, anyhow, it's, it's actually above the mid Bollinger Band, which is on a buy signal. Nice. So, and the Bollinger Bands are starting to uh, squeeze. Uh, nice. So, well, listen, Tim, this is a pleasure. Um, you know, as always, you know, absolutely fabulous. And we, of course, we look forward to the, the workshop next week. All right. Thank you. you Stay right there, folks. We'll come right back.